Hello, my name is Afredo Salmon Mujage from Olukea, Tanzania. Uh, welcome in this session from Siki Student uh, to, to start the new topic which is the lies of dictatorship in German, Italy and uh, Japan. This is the first topic according to the syllabus uh, of Form 6. Uh, we are going to see this topic and it has been included uh, various subtopics. So we are going to see uh, one after another. Uh, by starting with the definition of dictatorship, uh, dictatorship is defined as an autocratic form of government in which the government is ruled by an individual or a dictator. It means the dictatorship can be defined as an autocratic form of government in which the government is ruled by the individual or by an individual or a dictator. Uh, in this government, the power rests. Uh, in this uh, government, the power rests entirely on one person or group of people. It means that uh, in this government, the power rests, rests or already entirely. Uh, I mean, already uh, uh, on one person uh, or group of people. It means that the power of the government is less on one uh, one end of the one person, I mean on the end of one person or group of people. That we call dictatorship. A dictator is not restricted by law, constitution or other social and political factors within the states. It means that the dictator is not restricted by the law or constitution or the social or political uh, factors within the states because the dictator is is getting into the power by using the force or he, can, he or she can come into power by election but after getting the power they may change to be a dictator so that's uh, I mean that a dictator is not restricted by laws or constitution uh, or other social and political factors within the uh, state. Let us see the characteristics of dictatorship. Characteristics of dictatorship. The first one is total wipe of, of democracy. There is no democracy and no right to view or speech. It means that in dictatorial government there is no democracy. It means that there is no democracy. Means democracy. Uh, there is no democracy and no right to view or speak. It means that there is no right to speak or any right to question on that reader. You have no right. It means there is no democracy, no freedom of expression, no freedom of press in the democrat in the dictat dictatorial uh, government. Also, another characteristic is the militarism as the means of achieving political goals. It means that in dictatorial government, they use military as the means of achieving the goals of the state. So, the dictator will use the military or the army uh, to achieve the uh, political goals that have been settled or planned to be achieved by that leader in his or her. Uh, government or in his or her state. Another it is excessive use of terror and the propaganda in order to enforce uh, will and punish, unless without a trial and the threat to be to to his opponents. It means that uh, in a dictatorial government uh, there is excess excessive use of terror and, and the propaganda in order to enforce will and punish uh, at least without a uh, trial and the threat to his opponents. It means that the dictator give the threat to his opponents and uh, uh, at least without any trial uh, but also uh, there is a use of terror and the propaganda in order to enforce uh, and punish I mean to enforce the will and the punish. So that is another characteristic of a dictatorial government. Also, anti-semifier exercise racial segregation. 
It means that the dictatorial government has the uh, racial segregation or and semi fire exercise, uh, excessive uh, racial segregation. As you can consider the dictatorship that happened in, in German under uh, Adolf Hitler, that was uh, in, uh, that was segregating the Jews. So that was the kind of dictatorial government ever happened in the world by that time. Uh, another personality cut, it means dictatorship is characterized, is characterized by excessive worshipping of a dictator, obey without a question. It means that personality cut, it means in the dictatorial government there is the worshipping of a, a dictator. Uh, obeying the law, I mean obeying the orders of that dictator without uh, any question. That's the, another characteristic of uh, dictatorial government. Also, there is mass killings and the genocides of the opponents. To me, that in the dictatorial uh, government or uh, dictator uh, characterized by mass killing and the genocides of the opponents to mean those who try to op to oppose or to go against with that reader means dictator he or she gonna be killed because they just show the uh, opposition uh, towards that dictator so the resolution is to kill and uh, to kill or to execute those or opponents against the him or her Another is absence of freedom of press. It means that in dictatorial government there is no freedom of uh, press. The dictator controls newspaper, uh, magazines, books, and radios and TV stations. Uh, as you can see, that uh, the dictator uh, uh, does not allow the freedom of press. All the all the press are being owned or controlled by the dictator. For example, the newspapers are controlled by the uh, dictator, uh, magazines, uh, books, uh, radio stations, as well as uh, television stations uh, under the control of the dictator. It means that he wants to, to advertise or to give the news or information that uh, worship him not uh, opposing him so that's why he want or oh, in the dictatorial government the dictator uh, control all the places uh, like uh, radio stations uh, tv stations newspapers books magazines and other source of uh, information or source of news in the states and the last one i mean another one is extreme nationalism and the super patriotism the glories of the nation are pictured at the light and the justice. But the last one is denial of international peace uh, and the cooperation to refrain from international peace arrangements. To me that in dictatorial government there is a denial of international peace uh, and the cooperation to refrain uh, from international peace arrangements. As Aldo Fitra and Benito Mussolini as they did in the, in the year of of 1919s so that was that was the that was the, the these were the characteristics of a dictatorial government or oh, the characteristics of a dictatorship uh, one of the factors that contributed to the rise of dictatorship was the Great Depression of 1929 to 1933. It means that one of the factors, uh, one of the factors that contributed to the rise of dictatorship uh, was the Great Depression of 1929 up to 1933. Uh, as uh, our topic is showing that the rise of dictatorship in German, uh, Italy, and the Japan. It means we are going to set, uh, we are going to set or looking on these three uh, nations, on how their dictatorial leaders uh, came into being. 
So you can see that the dictatorship to rise or the rise of dictatorship in Germany, Italy and Japan was the result of great economic depression that eaten uh, all over the world or including Europe in from, 19, uh, from 1929 up to 1933. Uh, an economic depression refers to a slump in the in economy of the country. To mean that an economic depression refers to a slump in the economy of the country. In 1929, the economy of the entire world was hit by a period of depression. Therefore, the Great Depression refers to the worldwide uh, worldwide business slump of the 1930s uh, characterized by high unemployment and the low business that was the great economic depression that was characterized by high unemployment and the low business worldwide. Let us see fascism and the Mussolini in Italy. Fascism and the Mussolini in Italy. It means that lies of dictatorship in Italy, uh, fascism and the Mussolini. Uh, fascism was the policy that was come up or brought by uh, Benito Mussolini, the dictator in Italy. Fascism was a political system that existed in Italy during the interwar period, uh, that the first and the second world war. Uh, the Italian version of fascism was Fascio, meaning a group or squad of a few determined uh, superior men. To mean that fascism was a political system uh, that existed in Italy during the interwar period. Uh, that is the first world war and the second world war. Uh, the Italian version of, uh, of fascism was fascio. To mean that the the term fascism uh, are driven driven from the term fascio. Uh, meaning a group of a uh, meaning a group or squad of a few determined superior men in the nation. Uh, in the period after World War One, uh, the word fascism was used to denote uh, groups of people organized to fight communism and the socialism by force. It means that it means that uh, in the period after. The Second World War, uh, the word fascism uh, was used to denote or to, 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 to mean the group of people uh, organized to fight communism and socialism by using force. Uh, basic principles of fascism. What were the basic principles of fascism in Italy? The first one was extreme nationalism, to mean that fascism at the extreme uh, nationalism. An emphasis was laid on building up the greatness and the prestige of the Italian state with the implication that one only nation is superior to others and thus the fascists wanted Italy to become power or powerful in Europe. It means that uh, extreme, ex extreme nationalism, it means that there is an emphasis to mean that the emphasis was laid on building, uh, building up the greatness and the prestige uh, of the Italian state, and with the implication of that, one's uh, all I mean that one own nations is superior to others. To mean that who dominate or who who own the nation is superior to others, and thus the fascists wanted Italy to become. Uh, a powerful, uh, I mean, to be to become powerful in Europe. Another authoritarian system of government. To mean that fascism was authoritarian system of government. The fascist party removed all free election and banned all trade unions. Uh, all communications and the, the press were restricted by the government. And all radio programs and the newspapers were closely, uh, closely con counted by the states. And this was uh, important to protect the interest of the state, which was more important than the interest of the individual. It means that the fascism in Italy was the, uh, the principle, I mean the other principles, uh, 
authoritarian system of government whereby the fascist party removed all free election uh, and banned all trade unions that could bring opposition to the uh, Benito Mussolini. But all communications and the press were restricted uh, by the government and all the newspapers and the radio programs uh, were closely counted by the state or controlled by the state. And this was uh, important to protect the interest of the, uh, of the state or government which was more important than the interest of the individual. Uh, that was the second principle of fascism uh, in Italy. Another was a one-party state, meaning that the, the Italian state was to be under the one political party. All political parties except the fascist party were banned so that Italy became a one-party state like the Soviet Union. All political meetings and the associations were forbidden and the fascist party members were mostly the elite of the nation who would win uh, much, uh, much support with uh, thrilling speeches and skillful propaganda. It means that uh, I mean, fascism brought a one-party state to me that wanted to make Italy to be the state with the single political party. And that's why all political parties uh, accepted the fascist party. All other political parties were banned so that Italy became a one-party state, like a uh, Soviet Union or Soviet Socialist Republic Union, USSR. All political meetings and associations uh, were forbidden in the state or in Italy in order to, uh, to silence the opposition that would be brought by those elites who were forming, I mean, who could raise the opposition toward the leader. And the fascist party members were mostly the elites of the nation who would win the mass, uh, uh, mass support. And it means that the fascist party were, I mean, fascist party members were mostly the elites of the nation, and uh, the nation who would win the mass support uh, uh, with the thrilling speeches and the skillful propaganda to the majority of the Italy, or Itali I mean, uh, speech and the skillful propaganda to the Italians. Another principle was economic self-sufficient. To mean that. Uh, Italy of fascism come up with the economic self-sufficient. It means that there is no, or Italy should not depend on other other uh, European nations to support uh, to support her in any, I mean, in any economic project. And this was seen a uh, precondition in the development of the state. And the government had to direct the economic life of a country. Although this was not to be through uh, public ownership of the means of production. It means that uh, economic self-sufficient, uh, this was seen a precondition uh, in the development of the states. And the government had to direct the economic life of a country, uh, of the country, although uh, this was not to be uh, through public uh, ownership of the means of production. Another principle was military strength and the violence. To mean that Italy of fascism and the fascist party are the, the military strength and the violence uh, towards other uh, countries. Military strength and the violence were an integral part of life. And the Mussolini himself uh, once remarked that peace is absurd, fascism does not believe in it. Hence Mussolini forced fostered the myth that they are saved the power by revolution. It means that uh, military strength and violence uh, was another principle of fascism in Italy. And that's why military strength and violence uh, were an integral part of life among the Italians. And the Mussolini himself once uh, remarked that peace is uh, absurd uh, fascism does not believe in it, in the absurd. So, Ainsi Mussolini fostered the mind that uh, they uh, seized the power or they got power by revolution. Another was opposed to capitalism.
Fascism was strongly against ecotourism, which was associated with exploitation and oppression. And the fascist hated Western capitalist countries such as Britain and France. It means that it means that oppressed uh, cap I mean opposed capitalism. It means that the fascist or uh, fascism uh, opposed capitalism, especially uh, Western capitalists. Uh, fascism was strongly against uh, capitalism which was associated with exploitation of man by man uh, whereby the capitalists were exploiting the working class so the fascists were against the capitalists especially western capitalist countries such as Britain and the French so that's why Italy was uh, against or opposing those capitalist, western capitalist countries such as Britain and the French so let us see the rise of Mussolini and the fascism in Italy. How Mussolini came into being uh, with fascism in Italy. Rise of Mussolini and the fascism in Italy. Mussolini was born in 1883. Uh, he was a violent and a headstrong strong boy. To mean that Mussolini was born in 1883 and he was a violent and a headstrong strong boy. Uh, he qualified as a teacher but soon he turned to journalism. It means that Mussolini uh, studied or got the profession of, of being a teacher, but soon he turned the profession to be a journalism or a journalist. Mussolini often remarked that Italy needed a dictator who will be able to make a clean sweep. It means that Mussolini often remarked that. Italy needed a dictator who will be able to make a clean sweep in Italy. And several factors can be advanced to explain why to explain why Mussolini and his fascist party gained political in 1922. It should be emphasized uh, it should be emphasized that there was an atmosphere of general frustration in Italy. It means that uh, what were the factors that that made that made uh, Mussolini and the fascist party uh, to gain political I mean to gain political power in 1922 in Italy? It means that it should be noted that there were various uh, factors that were led to the emergence or to the rise of Mussolini and the fascism in Italy. The first one was the Italians had been disappointed by the outcome of the Paris Peace Settlement in 1915. It means that the Italians had been disappointed by the outcome of the Paris Peace Settlement in 1915 and the Italy joined the Great War and for the Allied powers who had promised our main territories such as Trenton, part of Dalmatian, uh, Trieste, etc. Unfortunately, Italy was not given all the territories as she was promised. Uh, the Italians felt cheated in the view that uh, the gains uh, from the confrontation, I mean from the conference, could not make the cost of the war and the leadership was condemned as inefficient because it failed to defend the interest of the Italian. It means that the Italian had been disappointed by the outcome of the Paris Peace uh, Settlement in 1915, as Italians were uh, promised to get territories like uh, Trenton, part of Dalmatian, uh, Trieste, and others. Unfortunately, the promise was not successfully or was not uh, was not made by those by that who promised them. Also, spread of communism and socialism. It means that the spread of communism and socialism was another factor that made Mussolini and the fascism to come or to rise in, uh, in Italy. The growth of communism and socialism in Italy threatened the interest of rich middle class. And the rich middle class was the most powerful group that owned the factories and the industries in Italy. And with this, uh, with the spread of the socialist propaganda to nationalize private ownership or enterprises 
At the economic interest of the middle class were threatened thus they gave their support to Mussolini, whom they believed would stop the spread of communism. It means that the, another factor that made Mussolini to come into being or into power uh, was the spread of communism and socialism. And that the rise of communism and socialism were aimed meaning to direct, I mean, was aimed, uh, was aimed direct to, to affect the middle class enterprises. And that's why the support of middle class was directed to, the, to Mussolini in order to stop the spread of communism in Italy. Also, internal insecurity. To me, that in Italy there was internal insecurity that were uh, fracturing the people of Italy. Uh, between 1919 and 1920, there was a wave of strikes accompanied by violence, cutting of shops, and the occupation of factories by workers. Uh, because uh, of this, it was clear that Italy needed a strong and determined leader which Mussolini seemed to be, and that's why he gave the rise of Mussolini and the fascism uh, in Italy. Another Mussolini's character and the personality, to me that Mussolini's character and the personality uh, was another factor that made him and the fascist party to come into power in Italy. Uh, Mussolini had a strong character and the personality and his fascist party was attractive to many sections of the Italian society. Uh, Mussolini promised to store uh, complete law and order, security and stability at a time when they were badly needed. In addition, Mussolini also promised uh, to transform Italy into a great world power. It means that uh, Mussolini, uh, Mussolini's character, I mean Mussolini's character and the personality was another or the last factor that made Mussolini to come into power or to the lies and its uh, fascist part. Uh, as we saw, Mussolini was a strong, uh, was a strong, was a strong, strong person in Italy, and that's why uh, he promised to me that Mussolini had a strong character and personality, and his fascist party was attractive. Uh, to many sections of the Italian societies. Uh, Mussolini promised to store complete law and order, uh, security and stability at a time when they were badly needed. It means that uh, Mussolini uh, promised the Italians that once I came into power, I will restore those all things which were lost, like the freedom, uh, Security, uh, complete law and order, and stability of the nation will be restored uh, by me. Uh, means Benito Mussolini was promising the, the Italians, and that's why the Italians decided to give him the power and the support to ensure that Italy is restoring, as restored uh, those all lost uh, 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 important. Uh, important rights to the people. And in addition, uh, Mussolini also promised to transform Italy into a great world power. To mean that, uh, in addition, Mussolini, with his character and, and the personality, uh, promised the Italians that once I came into power, I will transform Italy into uh, a great world power nation in, in the world. And that's why after uh, coming to power, Mussolini made Italy to be the authority to the world. It's because it, it means that Italy became a powerful nation uh, in the world because Italy was under dictator called Benito Mussolini. So this marked the, uh, the end of our, our class. So, uh, I would like to give you uh, some questions. So, after looking the different factors that made Mussolini to rise into power in Italy, so I would like to wind up there and give you uh, the exercise, uh, which is uh, two uh, questions. Uh, the first one is explain the characteristics of dictatorship, and the second one is assess the factor that gave 
and the lies of Benito Mussolini, uh, who is, is the fascist party in Italy. So I'd like to thank you for recent and uh, proceeding learning with Educare Tanzania. So I welcome in the next class. Thank you.